Look at this thing. Ugh. Oh, jungle spear. <laughs> this is like from my elbow to the, what? What do you even do with this? Hunt boar? <laughs> uh, Self-defense, sock pee folder. I'm not even sure why I own it. The action, oh, smooth. I'll let Talon go over the particulars, but every now and then we send, every now and then, <laughs> every day, we send each other photos of knives and videos of us flicking them open and sharpening and ruining knives and uh, the, uh, the whole nine. But every so often, one of us peer pressures the other into buying a knife that we just say, you must own this. You have to own this. That was this one for me. I got it in the mail, looked at it, and was like, Talon needs this. This needs to be in Talon's go bag. I assume he has a go bag. I mean, look at the guy. He's, def he's definitely got a go bag. This needs to be in said bag. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. I kind of want to use the glass breaker to just smash. That's a horrible idea. Don't worry. I won't do that. But uh, mostly, I just wanted to say you're welcome. Because based off my peer pressure, this knife arrived at Talon's house. And now you are seeing this dope video because of my peer pressure. So, you're welcome. Talon, I'll leave the rest up to you. I didn't mean to actually stick that to my desk. What's going on everyone? Back with another episode of Stuff and Things. And that's correct, you can thank my friend Pete for this video here. So far, everything he said about this is correct. A jungle spear, Sure, could you kill hogs with it? Probably, but the most important thing is self-defense. That's exactly what this knife was designed for. It's huge. Everything about it screams tactical, and yeah, it's the size of most people's forearms. Unless you're like an orangutan and have crazy long arms, this thing is probably the biggest knife in my collection other than fixed blades. Now, as you could probably tell by the thumbnail of this video, that was obviously very Pete inspired. Instead of pulling from the hashtag today, I just went straight to the man himself and got a photo of his sock pee. So here you have a very pirate-esque dark and moody photo. This knife to me is just so interesting to photograph because it's huge and slender and I don't know, it just has a really cool look to it. So thank you to Pete for the photo, for the segue into this video of the knife that we're taking a look at today, the Benchmade Sock P. Now let's start off with that name. This is actually the 391 Sock P Tactical Folder from Benchmade. Sock P is short for the Special Operations Combatives Program, which became the first official program for all of the US Special Operations Forces. The 391 is packed with features from top to bottom, and a large majority of them do serve a tactical purpose. For some of the specs, the blade length is coming in at 4.47 inches, it has a handle length of 5.66 inches, and a massive overall length of 10.13 inches. Now although this is a big long knife, it's still pretty slender and lightweight coming in at 4.1 ounces, and part of that is due to the CF Elite handle scales. They have some pretty aggressive texturing running the entire length of the handle, and you will also find three index points on each side of the knife, and we'll talk about those in a second. The blade is made out of a D2 steel, it's a spear point design, and this knife does feature the Benchmade axis lock as well. They're using a thumb plate to get this knife open, and it does ship with two different pocket clips, both right and left hand, tip up and tip down carry. Now, as you guys can see marked on the blade right here, this knife was designed by Greg Thompson. If you're familiar with any of the Sock P knives from the past, then you probably recognize their daggers. I was always kind of interested in them, but this, blending the line of a folder and also a very long, slender tactical knife, this is what really drew me to it. Other than Pete, of course, planting that bug in my brain. So this past weekend, I was actually lucky enough to get Greg Thompson himself on the phone for about an hour, and we talked about this knife from top to bottom. We talked about training. You name it, we crammed it into that hour-long discussion, and I was able to ask him a ton of questions about the design of this knife. We're going to go over some of those questions and a little bit more right back here at the workbench. Now, where do we begin with this thing? I guess the box is a good starting point. Of course, this one is coming from Benchmade's black line. Here again is that designation, the 391 BK Sock P folder, tactical and rescue knife. 
So inside of this box, like I mentioned, they do include the typical Benchmade stuff. However, they also have another clip. They also have blue Loctite and a tool, which was a nice touch. So when you get this knife out of the box, it's coming in this configuration right here. It has a pretty standard long deep carry pocket clip in the tip up position. This speedy ring clip is the one that you actually have in the bag and I had a lot of questions about that for Greg and we'll talk about that in a second. So let's start with the CF Elite handle scales on here. They sort of look like the same grievery on the bailout and the bug out. This is actually another knife coming out of Benchmade's black line. And just comparing these two materials side by side, I will definitely say that I prefer the CF Elite. They're actually making these and the bug outs in the same material. I think they should do that with all their knives. Just get rid of this material that no one really cares for. So not only is this material a little bit better, but the texturing that they put on here is extremely aggressive because this is a fighting knife or a jungle spear, whatever you want to do with it. It may be sort of hard to tell on camera, but all of these little ridges are directional. So when I push on this, it's not super aggressive, but then when I pull my thumb into it, that is when you really get lock up with this thing. The texture is sort of ramp-like, so you have some going this way, some going this way, and then they converge around this center index point right here. Now these index points are here for actually manipulating this knife in your hand so you can spin it around and depending on what you need to do with the blade, this will give you sort of a tactile way to move this thing in your hand and still have good control over it. If we look at the knife from the back, you will see that it is a semi flow through design. It does have a backspacer here and there is jimping all along this knife on both sides. Now when this blade is open, you do have a very good purchase on this thing, no matter how you're gripping it. That handle length is huge, so even if your hands are massive, I don't think that this knife is ever gonna go slipping out of your hand. Even with these index points here, as long as you know where your hand is falling on that handle, you can flick this thing around in your hand. It's sort of hard to do in front of the camera. And although the knife is sort of slim, slender, and light, it still feels really good, and I have like very good control over this thing no matter what I'm doing with it. I almost forgot to mention that this thing was designed perfectly slim enough to fit in molly webbing. I've tested this in a few different forms of molly, and it fits in every one almost perfectly. Speaking of the things that you can do with it, we might as well talk about some of the functionality. This thing could be used as almost a non-lethal defense. You do have a carbide window breaker down here on the end, which in my experience works better than like a ball bearing style. I have tested things like this before on the channel, so you can find some older videos of me doing that type of stuff. But this knife is so long and the handle is big enough that when you grip up on this thing, you could easily break windows with that. You can really use this as a striking tool, dig it into someone's ribs, hit someone with it. This is simply a fighting knife in every sense of the word. Now how about the actual EDC functionality of it? As you'll notice on the box, it doesn't say anything about being an everyday carry knife and I'm glad that they didn't put that on here. This is designed for tactical applications and rescue applications so if you're a police officer, maybe an EMT, something of that sort, or of course if you're in special operations you could carry a knife like this very easily and there are just so many things you can do with it. Now back to the pocket clip, the blade came out of the box just like like this tip up carry with this long deep carry pocket clip and that's fine and all that is fine if you're going to everyday carry a blade like this however I noticed that when you pull the knife out of your pocket it's so long and slender that you really have to like reposition your grip kind of inch your way down to this thumb stud here and then flick it open like that you could also utilize the axis lock which is actually great on this one right here if you just give that a little bit of a pull down the blade falls very nicely the action on this thing is very smooth what about other knife stuff? The centering on this is great. The thumb plate or the thumb disc did take a little bit to get used to. I basically just flick it out with the tip of my fingernail there. You could also do it with like the meat of your thumb. And then just before you get to that, there is a little bit of jimping. So you're gonna have a good purchase on this knife. So I, of course, am not going to EDC a knife like this. I opted to switch out to this circular pocket clip right here because it just speaks to the overall design of this knife. Now, I will be one of the first people to tell you that I do not carry a knife for self-defense purposes up front. First and foremost, I carry a blade every single day for just simple EDC tasks. I get a lot of packages, I'm opening mail constantly, and that's what I use a blade for. If it has any kind of tactical advantage to it, 
it, then that's just an added bonus. I have a little bit of blade training and tactical courses under my belt, working with different styles of blades. However, when I'm looking to carry a knife, the tactical advantage of it is not first. The Sock P puts its tactical functions first and foremost, and that's exactly what this thing is bred for. So why this pocket clip? This is a question that I asked Greg directly. I said, which pocket clip should I use? How should I actually run this knife if I were to use it in a tactical self-defense situation? So as a brief summary, I landed on this pocket clip right here in this exact position, one for the indexing point. When this thing is riding in your pocket, it is very easy to find that thing with your pointer finger. You can index that knife with just two fingers, your pointer finger and your thumb. And this makes it very easy to slide out of your pocket. Now, when you're pulling that knife out, it falls right into your hand as you see it here, which means my thumb is now right next to the thumb disc. It's the fastest way to deploy the knife. Like I mentioned, if you have the other clip deep carry on this side, if I pull the knife out from this end, then I either have to like rotate the knife or just kind of like choke up on it a lot turn my hand and then flick it out. This option makes it much easier to find in your pocket, makes it easier to draw and get access to that blade as quick as possible. Now, another reason for the design of a shorter clip like this is actually to keep this thing concealed. This kind of goes hand in hand with another question that I asked him. I said, why is the knife so long? Why is it so big? Basically, he explained that a lot of guys would prefer the largest knife possible in a fighting scenario. Now, when these guys who are highly trained are going about their day in a relatively normal life, they're obviously not going to opt for a fixed blade this size. The Sock P daggers are great, and I'm sure most people would prefer those in a true self-defense situation. However, if it's somewhat big and cumbersome, then chances are you're not going to carry it. It kind of follows the same lines of a firearm. If I was in a situation where I needed something like that, would I rather have a Glock 17? Sure, I want a larger gun with a bigger grip, easier to shoot, more capacity. However, that's not something that is feasible to keep on you every single day. Sure, you could do it, but it's not going to be as comfortable as something like a Glock 19 or even a 43X. So making the Sock P in a folding configuration like this allows people to carry a much larger knife, which is suited for self-defense, but it doesn't get in the way of daily life activities as much. I have sort of been experimenting with carrying this thing over the past week or so, and I have to say, other than it being a very long knife, it doesn't bother me all that much in my pocket. If we compare that again right next to the bailout, this is a fairly long knife. This still has like an extra inch on it, and as long as your pockets are long enough, I really didn't see any issue with carrying this. So this knife is super long for that reason there. You have a tactical advantage when fighting with a knife like this. Now also back to the concealed portion of this clip. This clip is much shorter than the one that this ships with. How deep it carries in your pocket is relatively the same, but depending on where you actually put this clip, this is going to be much more concealed. So this clip is also helpful for stashing this thing inside your actual pants. Not your pocket, but clipping this thing to the inside waistline of your jeans and having it run down inside. That way you can conceal this thing behind a bloused out shirt or even a belt buckle. Now I have not carried this knife in that configuration simply because I am not using this knife for self-defense, but I did sort of want to get a feel for it and see how this thing was actually designed to be carried. I'm gonna be honest with you, for me, it's a little weird. It definitely conceals that way pretty well. However, if I actually had to access this knife and pull it out in a hurry, I think that might make it a little bit more difficult than just having this thing riding up front in my pocket. I would love to actually get one of these in a trainer version and actually train with Greg because that would just be a super cool experience. Other than just talking to him about this knife, it would be nice to have that real world experience of training with a blade like this. Now for this blade, this thing is a spear point design because physics, this is obviously going to be the best style blade for a self-defense situation. Now sure, a Tonto blade like this definitely has good stabbing power and good penetration. However, a spear point design like this right here obviously just has less drag and even better performance when it comes to stabbing. They went with a D2 steel on this, which is a super tough steel. It's gonna have really good wear resistance, some pretty good edge retention, and everything about this Sock P folder is tactical. It's a fighting knife through and through, and now that I actually have it in my hand and get a feel for how this thing moves, I definitely understand where Greg was coming from when making designs like this. 
So that's a lot of information all at once. Let's get into some quick comparisons. There we go, I actually have to adjust my camera because this thing is so long. So here again, we have the bailout right next to that. It just simply dwarfs this knife. Here's another pretty common knife that we can compare it to. I do a lot of comparisons to the paramilitary two. These knives just look like baby little knives next to this thing. So let's move into some more serious ones like the CRKT Seismic. Huge knife, super robust design, a little bit too big for my pockets because it's so thick and still it's a lot smaller than the Sock P. Now this thing is so long that we could obviously compare it to something like a Balasong. Here we have the Microtech Tachyon 3. I've been using this one for comparisons a lot. Again, larger than that and even larger than the Benchmade 87. So there you guys go. You have a quick comparison of this against everything else here. And as far as length goes for a folding knife, this is the largest knife that I have in my collection today. That is until the day where I somehow come across an Espada XL. Don't think that's gonna happen. And unlike that knife, this thing was designed with a very specific purpose in mind. This is used and was designed for a specific group of people and with all of the functionality that comes with this thing, it actually makes it very usable for even someone like myself or anyone else out there watching. Now I'm just gonna wrap this thing up and hope I never have to use something like this. So that is going to be all for my thoughts on the newest Sock P tack folder from Benchmade. This is a very purpose-built knife, and although I don't always carry a knife specifically for self-defense, I can definitely appreciate every little design aspect that went into this thing, especially after talking to Greg himself. I may not have covered everything that you guys were wondering, so if you have any more questions, let me know in the comments down below and I will try to answer them as best as possible. If there's anything that I don't know, I will just simply reach out to Greg and ask him firsthand. So that is going to be all for today. Spinning this thing around with those index points in my hand is super addicting. You wouldn't think that this knife would be fidgety, but it's kind of fidgety. Now, if you guys are new to this channel, consider clicking subscribe and make new videos every week and we got one more Lockdown Knife Week video coming tomorrow. It's a pretty cool one too, so you don't want to miss it. As always, thank you guys for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.